Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel Cakes by MK. In today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to use wafer paper to turn your cake into a modern abstract piece of art. If you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up below because it really helps with the YouTube algorithm, which means more people get to see my videos. But from that, let's get right into this video. So the first thing I'm doing is making my paint that I'm going to use to colour my wafer paper. So what I've got here is a bowl with some water in it and then I'm simply going to add a few drops of gel colour to my water and mix that together. I'm using pink gel colour but you guys can go ahead and use whichever colour you like. Now once that's done and you've got a really thin watery paint then it's time to prepare our wafer paper. Now you want to make sure the surface you're working on is really dry because wafer paper is really sensitive to moisture. So what I've got here are some sheets of wafer paper. So wafer paper has a rough side and a smooth side. You can't see it that well on camera, but the side that you want to paint on is the smooth side. So what I'm doing first is making some wafer paper triangles by cutting the wafer paper into three strips and then cutting those strips further to create nine rough triangles all together. You really don't need to worry about being super neat and you can get creative and make other shapes too. Now you don't want to be too rough with your wafer paper like I am here, otherwise you may rip it like I have. Wafer paper can rip quite easily, so yeah, you just want to be gentle with it. Now once you've got all your cutouts ready to go, then you want to prepare something to place your wafer paper on to dry after you've painted them. So two methods I like are one, just to grab some long cylindrical objects and use them to shape your wafer paper on, or two, which is my preferred option, is using a bunch of bubble wrap which you can kind of crinkle up and then place your wafer paper on top of. The reason I like this method is because you can change the shape of the bubble wrap really easily to suit how you want your wafer paper to kind of sit on it after it's been painted. So once everything is ready to go, then you want to start painting your wafer paper. Now you only want to paint a really thin layer on the wafer paper, otherwise if you use too much of the paint, then it's going to dissolve your wafer paper, which you really don't want. And you don't need to be super neat too. I actually prefer painting roughly on my wafer paper on purpose, because I like the character that it brings to your wafer paper once it's dried. Now once you're done painting, then you want to really gently start shaping your wafer paper. There are so many different ways you can do this. You can create soft rounded patterns or sharper edged patterns. It's really up to you. And then you just want to place it onto your bubble wrap or whatever you're using to hold the shape of your wafer paper. And then just repeat the process with the rest of your wafer paper. When it comes to shaping the wafer paper, I like to shape them all a little differently so that I've got more of a variety to work with in the end. So with this one here, I've kind of pinched it in the middle which creates this nice kind of sharp edge on one side which I really like. Because the wafer paper is super delicate, sometimes it doesn't sit the way you want it to so I'm just adjusting the bubble wrap here so that I've got the shape that I want. Now once all my smaller pieces of wafer paper were done, I went ahead and created some larger pieces by cutting some bigger triangles out of wafer paper, and then went ahead and did the same thing that I did with the smaller pieces. So I lightly painted them and then shaped them the way that I wanted. It can be a little tricky dealing with larger pieces of wet wafer paper, so just remember to be gentle so you don't rip the wafer paper. And then once that's all done, you're left with these pretty pieces of coloured wafer paper which now need to be left to dry. Now once they're dry, you can't shape them again, so I'm just doing one last adjustment of my bubble wrap here so that the wafer paper dries into the shapes that I want. So they usually take a couple of hours to dry, but I prefer to leave them overnight. Now once the pieces of wafer paper have dried, they should just easily release from whatever you've placed them on, and they'll be quite firm now too, so you can't kind of bend them or reshape them anymore. Now our wafer paper is technically ready, but it's nice to kind of amp them up a little, so what I'm doing next is I'm going to add a bit of a golden shimmer to my wafer paper, and to do this I'm combining some round sprinkles with about half a teaspoon of luster dust. You don't need to be precise with the measurements, and then I'm just giving that a really good mix. Now 
Now next I'm grabbing a piece of my wafer paper and I'm moving the edges around in the sprinkle mixture and this creates a really beautiful soft shine on the wafer paper. I'm just adding a little more luster dust here because I felt like the shine wasn't bright enough and then I'm moving the edges of the wafer paper again in the mixture. I really love the soft gold effect on the wafer paper. I think it's super elegant and classy and I love using the sprinkle mixture technique too because I find that I use way less luster dust than say if I just used a brush to add the luster dust to my wafer paper. Now once that's all done we are left with these gorgeous pieces of wafer paper ready to decorate our cake with. So I've got a rustic two-tier buttercream cake here, which I've created some texture on, and I'm going to go ahead and start placing my wafer paper on my cake. Now there's a few ways that you can do this. If your buttercream is soft like mine is at the moment, I'm just gently pressing the wafer paper against the cake and it sticks right on. But if your buttercream is cold and firm, or if you're using a fondant or ganache cake, then you can use piping gel, water, or buttercream to help your wafer paper stick to your cake. Now I thought I was done with my cake, but I have a serious problem where I just don't know where to stop. So I went ahead and removed some of my pieces of wafer paper and reapplied them in a way that I was happy with. And that is it, my modern, very trendy abstract cake is all done. So that is it guys, that is how you create a beautiful, modern, trendy looking cake using wafer paper. If you want to know how to store your wafer paper, you know, before you go ahead and put it onto your cake, you can definitely make them in advance. Then all you need to do is just pop them into an airtight container once they've dried up and just pop it in a cool dry place. Now when it comes to placing your cake into the fridge, it's preferred that you don't place your cake with wafer paper into the fridge because wafer paper is sensitive to humidity. But you know, if you really need to place your cake into the fridge, you know, once wafer paper dries, it's pretty stable so you should be okay. Now in terms of how long the wafer paper will last once you put it onto your cake, as long as you don't keep your cake you know under you know really humid conditions or you know under direct sunlight, your cake will be absolutely fine for at least a few days so your wafer paper is not going to kind of melt or anything like that, particularly if you use the method that I showed you today where you kind of wait for your wafer paper to dry you know for over kind of 24 hours or so. But if you want to be kind of you know 100% sure that your wafer paper is going to last on your cake, especially if you're doing it on a buttercream cake so you've got that kind of extra moisture coming through from the buttercream then I would recommend placing your wafer paper onto your cake just before you know you're going to take it to your venue or give it to your you know client so yeah that's basically it so I hope you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up below if you did thanks again for watching cakes by MK and I will see you guys in the next video